Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Land, please. The Binding of Isaac Afterbirth Plus. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm fine, thank you, and you. We got 33 wins in a row. The Henrik Sedin number. We already passed the Daniel Sedin number. How are we looking here? Um, actually, like, really great stats. And there was your seed there. Uh, like, like, really, really great stats. How about that? Good HP. Great rate of fire. Great damage. I don't say great too much these days when we're talking about Isaac. It really... It, it requires a... Well, actually, I completely... I think what I originally said there was wrong. <laughs> I think, if anything, I've actually become a, a much easier judge in Isaac. Uh, don't do it. <laughs> a much easier judge in Isaac the more Eden runs I've played. The more Eden runs I play, the more I'm like, actually, like, a run that I maybe two years ago would have thought is trash, or at least average, is uh, closer to, like, the high end than the low end by a large margin. So, sorry, I shouldn't say large margin. You never know how many people here roughly my age were traumatized by watching uh, Pee Wee's Big Adventure growing up. If you were there, you don't need me to tell you what large marge is. You understand. It's probably one of the first traumatic cinematic memories for uh, for people around my age. I was thinking about that the other day. I mean, we were talking about it, I think, uh, on, on Unity or... What the heck? Stop shooting! Stop shooting! <laughs> we were talking about it on, on either Unity or the NLSS. But, like, movies... I think I was talking about it with on the NLSS with Rob and Corey and Bear. But movies that you saw maybe a little bit too early in life that traumatized you. I was surprised to hear, after two decades of being embarrassed about it, that I am not the only person who, as a child, was traumatized by Independence Day. As an adult, it is just an action movie, more or less. Just a sci-fi action movie. Might get the adrenaline pumping in parts. I actually watched like half of Independence Day on TV the other night. I still don't think it's very good. <laughs> I think that this. I heard the sequel was truly horrendous. I think it's fine. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I like Jeff Goldblum. Um, I like Will Smith, you know, decently enough, and uh, Bill Pullman. But. Uh, I, I always thought, like, I, I'm on the lower end of that rating scale. But as a kid, that movie, like, it ruined me for a bit. It's the scene where they're in the, like, Area 51, and Brent Spiner, who played Data on Star Trek, he has, uh, he's got, like, one of the aliens trapped, and then it starts talking with the president, it goes, Peace. No, peace. And, it, you know. Then they shoot it with a bunch of 9mm handguns and it dies. <laughs> but as a kid, I was like, you know, if the aliens ever invade, we're screwed. It was a hard one for my parents, right? Because what do you say to a kid like that? If the aliens invade, we're screwed. No, sweetie, we would somehow fight back their superior... They're not going to invade, okay? So you don't have to worry about it, I think, is where we ended up. A lot of alien movies from my from my youth kind of screwed me up. I love sci-fi, don't get me wrong. But like, Independence Day scared me a lot as a kid. I was genuinely afraid of an alien invasion. Um, which I think like if it's one of the more rational fears. It's, it's unlikely, but if there was an alien invasion, we're probably screwed. No offense, uh, Mathis. And Mathis probably agrees now that I think about it, but um, don't go too hard here. I'd like to get to 15 cents, but we'll, we'll get a penny elsewhere in all likelihood. Um, not one of the most likely to come to pass, but if it came to pass, you're torched. The other thing is, like, it's a fear that's kind of ever-present when you have that fear, right, as a child. Like, you could be afraid of planes. You don't want to be in a... You don't want to fly because you're worried you're going to, you know, be in a plane crash. But, you know, you're not really, like, afraid when you're not in a plane. You know what I mean? This is, <laughs> maybe if you had, like, an insanely high-level phobia or something, you might have, like, recurring nightmares about being in a, inside of a plane. But 
you know, if you were just like eating lunch, you're not gonna be like, what if I just was in a plane crash right now? But as an eight-year-old kid with an active imagination who had just seen Independence Day, you're like, you could just be chilling at school. Guess what, alien invasion. You don't have to be like, you know, in the... Like with snakes, you know? You, you just, uh, if you stay out of the Amazon rainforest, you're relatively okay. No 35-foot-long anacondas are too likely to come out and bite you. Well, they don't bite you, they constrict you, but anyway, you get the idea. Other ones, I mean, there's the classic Don't Hurt Me, I'm Ryan story. When I saw the Adams Family 1 in theaters and Thing, which is just a disembodied hand, starts running at the screen. Starship Troopers also got me pretty good. I would, like, my, my dad rented it on, uh, VHS, I'm sure. Right after it came out on VHS, he was like, my, my son likes, uh, these alien movies. You watch it and you're like, oh my god. As an adult, again, or a teenager, great movie. As a 10 or 11 year old, I was like, oh my god, when the brain worms start... And the insects are flying down and chopping people's heads off, like... It was a little much for me. But I also kind of see that as a quintessential uh, <laughs> childhood experience. I don't know if it did anything good for me in the in the whole scheme of things, but uh, you know, I, I think that by having that story, we can bond. And if anything, it was probably more annoying for my parents than anything, because you know, you watch Independence Day and you're like, oh, that was kind of fun, but not that good. And then what what's the penalty you have to pay for that? Uh, you know, for the next like month. Every time we went to bed, there was like a 1 in 10 chance I would be like, Mom! <laughs> Mom! Mom! You know, you get the idea. I was kind of a baby as a kid. I mean, most babies are, but it, like, I was a baby for longer. I thought that was my fire somehow. Then, then most people are babies, I think. But that's okay, I got over it. Perhaps that's why I'm so, uh concerned with acting mature now. Mature? M-A-T-U-R-E? Mature? Oh, so sure is pronounced like that, but mature... Wait, no, that does that. It works against my original point. I apologize. So I chose nothing from the deal with the devil. And I, I stand by it. That was very helpful. Thank you. Th thank you again. I really do stand by it. Uh, I'm I'm modestly concerned about my HP, but but we should like statistically we're in a good spot. Uh, the mind was an incredible item to gather here, of course, and then uh, I mean black candle is just it's one of the better items in the game for just quality of life purposes. I think we want that, and I think we want to reroll. I think we want to go a little hard on our uh, on our blood bank here. I think that could be good for us. So I will confess, by the way, that my loneliness is killing me now. Uh, 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 don't you know I, that I still believe uh, that you will be here? So give me a sign. Hit me, baby, one more time. However, you, once you start, you, you can't stop the words of power. Uh, I haven't played Isaac in a few days. I, I got a nice backlog right now. Just be careful. I think we're gonna leave it at that. I got a nice backlog right now, and I never want to like, cause once you fall out of practice, that's where things get a little bit dangerous. I think. Uh, so I don't. I don't want to deviate from like my my routine of Isaac. But I had some other stuff that needed to be recorded, uh, and I, I had a I had a good time doing it. And I'm back. I got some space. Not much space today. But I got some space overall <laughs> to to record more Isaac lately. But we're still like, I mean, I'll date the backlog. Today is like, it's July 22nd, 2020. Hopefully this doesn't end up being a relic. I feel like anytime you start saying something on video with like, today's July 22nd, 2020. Like you're you're building it so that people from you know, six months from now, we'll be like, oh my god, a recording from the before times. Maybe we can use this to figure out what happened. So hopefully that's not the case. I mean, if anything, I would like to think that uh, if there was an incredible catastrophe coming, 
uh, or like, you know, the collapse of society. Previously, I would have thought that it was like some unforeseen event, like, I don't know, an incredible solar flare that knocked out all electronics would, would be the only thing that can do it. Now I realize that you can actually see the collapse coming a long way away. The only thing is, uh, rather than do something about it, people will instead just argue. <laughs> Not to bring people down, but... Be like, hey, we should really, uh... No, build like uh, some kind of defense to stop this asteroid from hitting us. It's not coming for like ten years, but uh, you know, I hey, well, you you we might not even be here in ten years. I don't want my tax dollars to go to create a solution to save human life. Are you insane? Everybody should buy their own personal asteroid shield, and if you can't afford it, then you should have worked harder. Yeah, but what if like your asteroid shield deflects pieces of the asteroid into my in in the, my asteroid area where I previously otherwise might have been safe. Well, you you, you you get the idea. We don't need to go too far into this. You're you're picking up on the metaphor, I'm sure. Um, it's the serpent's kiss, asa sa sa, which is what I always say when I pick it up. Why? I don't know. It just kind of stuck. It's like how we used to do that. You know, we'll find the energy crystals. We'll find Doctor Wowie. You know that one? I forget what Mega Man it's from. Someone in the comments will know for sure. It's one of those franchises where people know. <laughs> it's like Sonic. People know, dude. Were you a Mario or a Sonic fan growing up? You don't need me to answer this. You're aware. For me, of which one I am. Um, and, well, was and am. I still, like, I never got Sonic. I still don't. Not, I don't mean like I don't understand its popularity. I mean like on a literal level, I don't understand how to play it. I'm like, you're supposed to go fast, but you're also supposed to not walk into the spikes? Make up your mind! That's almost a caricature, but it's also how I feel. <laughs> I don't think it's a bad game, I'm just... I'm like, I wish that I could see what it was that was so good about it, because I think that would enrich my quality of life. Oh, th thank you. Uh, thank you. I'll pay you Tuesday for a hamburger today, I will. Thank you for this. I really appreciate it. Thank you. So, Mom's Knife, um, and Nine Lives. Pretty good. Two, two of the better items in the game, I would say. Um, this, this is a great position to be in. Now, I have to admit something embarrassing. I actually didn't think I would have time to record an Isaac episode right now. I was in the last minute. Uh, of planning the NLSS, I was very paranoid. I was like, I don't even know if we're going to get a docket done on time. Dude, this is ridiculous. This is crazy. And then uh, I went, I literally was like a second away from hitting the start streaming button. And I thought, wait a minute, does the show on Wednesday start at 1 p.m. or does it start at 2 p.m.? And I was like, it starts at 2 p.m. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, I have an extra hour. I really need to... At some point, we need to just standardize the, the start time. It's not Josh's fault. Like, what? Well, I mean, okay, let me put it this way. It is Josh's fault, but it's not the kind of thing where we should prescribe blame. You know, it. nobody's at fault because it's not something that you could be at fault for. But it is because of Josh that we start the Monday NLSS at 3 p.m. So that he can fit in uh, because of his, you know, he works... At, a real job, and he's in the Eastern Time Zone. There's no getting around it. And I bring that up because I know that people love Josh. So when they try to come up with, like, overly simplistic ways that we could, you know, simplify our, our schedule, they'll be like, okay, if it was anybody else, I might have been like, just cut him. But for Josh, we'll make an exception. I understand how it is. I'm hip. I'm with it. Oh, you, uh, you're showing me there's a tinted rock there. Probably should have paid attention to that, but that's okay. Hey, this run is basically unlosable now. So if you're wondering, like that does still happen. That you, it it might happen less as you get older, but I definitely still wake up some days, and like one of the first things I think of is like, what day is it? What do I have to do today? What what is my what does my schedule look like today? And routinely, I will wake up. On a Saturday, but routinely, I mean like once or twice a year. That's a routine. If spring cleaning is a routine, then that's a routine too. But I'll wake up uh, on a Saturday and be like, oh, I gotta do like, you know, uh, Friday stuff today. 
before I realize, before my conscious brain kicks in and goes, uh, excuse me, sir, no you don't. Today is the day of relaxation. Don't you dare. So we could do that, or hear me out here. We could use a bomb. We could go, uh, I, I probably would go into our item room, even though our shop could also give us, uh, sure, actually that's quite nice. Even though our shop could also give us a key, if it had greed, we would have missed out heavily. Oh, dude, this is a, it's a dream come true. It's like, it's like step one of a Brian McKnight song. But yeah, today's Wednesday. Uh, it's been a pretty, and we've been talking about it on Check the Wire. I, I kind of I feel bad for Dan on Check the Wire lately because I've been living a very routine life with a, an ample amount of work-life balance, but also still getting quite a lot of work done. Like someone on Twitter pointed out to me yesterday, like, hey, NL, you've uploaded 11 hours of content in the past 24 hours. Now, to be fair, it wasn't 11 hours of live content. But still, <laughs> just in the abstract sense, that's that's a lot. Um, but but I've just honestly, like, without tooting my own horn too much, I've just been pretty efficient lately. You know, not wasting a whole lot of time, which is probably a good habit to get into. And you know, it's been it's been pretty nice. I, I wish I had more anecdotes. I will say, you know, I, I may have mentioned this to the last Isaac episode I recorded. I'm not sure. No, I think it was in Track Mania, actually. Give me this. Um, but, sadly, uh, COVID cases are, are on the rise in British Columbia again. Which, on a universal level... You know what? Give me this so we stay in Horror Babylon more easily. Um, is almost like... I don't want to say we deserve it, because that's mean-spirited. But I'll admit that in British Columbia, and definitely myself included, I'm not absolving myself from this, we've had a sense over the past few months, like, things were touch and go when the when it first started, and uh, then, once it, you know, things started to level out a little bit, we were like, ooh, thank God that people up here are, like, following the rules and, like, you know, yada, yada, yada. We kind of got a little smug. We got a little smug. I do hear my house creaking quite loudly. <laughs> it's a scary thought. Hold on a second. Let me, let me look out the window here. Everything okay? Yeah, no earthquake. All right, that's good. Uh, let's move on here. We, we got smug. I mean, it just is what it is. I, I don't think we thought that it couldn't happen here, but we were like, ooh, thank God we dodged the bullet that could never possibly come back. And now people are doing, you know, naked drum circles again, which is the West Coast tradition, and, you know, swapping saliva with uh, 25 people at our hockey riots, and all of a sudden, we got a little spike again. So I'm, I'm hoping... Because we, we have, like... I mean, they basically po had articles that were like, mission accomplished, you know what I mean? Even in the New York Times, they did a, a profile of, uh, of BC's, uh, I mean, I guess she's the Surgeon General. I don't, I don't know if that's the term we use up here, but that's the analog at least. Um, and they were like, how she defeated COVID in an area that, you know, you would have expected to have a lot of it because we have an international airport, lots of travel from those early hot spots, high population density, etc., etc. And then, like, really seems like people have gotten a little complacent about it, but uh, hopefully, you know, that she, she very sternly was like, hey, stop that. So hopefully by the time this video goes live, that... I mean, there's really going to be one of two ways. <laughs> the numbers are going to look better or they're going to look worse. There's a little ways that... Because it's a lagging indicator, you know? There's a little ways it can go before it gets... We shouldn't have even picked that up. Before it gets terrible. So even if it gets worse... Oh, we should have gone the other way. Even if it gets worse, there's room for it to get worse without being truly terrified. Though, obviously, people would be like, don't say that. I'm not saying go out there and party. I'm just saying, like, you know, don't lose your mind over a little uptick necessarily. You know, obviously stay indoors and, you know, keep doing your, your quarantine level stuff. We might as well take it now, quite frankly. So maybe we can lose it on our deal with the devil. Um, but, 
you know, it, the way that obviously these things grow is not necessarily exponential, but it can become, you know, quite, quite high, quite fast. Anyway, hopefully, you know, I mean, it's, I'm not a public health expert, but it seems like, you know, for the time being, it's just the kind of reality you're going to have to live with. You know, it's going to be bad and you're going to kind of like close things down. And then after you close things down, it's going to get better. But people are also going to lose their minds a little bit from being closed in. And then when you open it up, they're going to be like, it's been, you know, three months since I, you know, went out to a nightclub. And then they're going to go out of the nightclub for a month or so. And then cases are going to start to tick up again. And you're going to have to... I mean, you get the idea. I'm not saying it's the way it has to be, but, it, you know... Really? That's not our secret room, huh? I guess we should have known. <laughs> it seems like it's the way things uh, are going to be for a while, for sure. Probably, this is not a great example of doing the little things uh, right. What's going on there? It's interesting, huh? Yeah, so uh, I guess what I'm saying is uh, if you hate hearing me talk about this stuff, wear a mask. <laughs> well, <laughs> you, every person out there that's wearing uh, their mask and staying inside and washing their hands when uh, appropriate, you're probably cutting off one picosecond from the pandemic. And uh, if enough of you do it, you may, our, our whole audience combined might be able to cut off as much as one ten thousandth of a second. So I, you know, I mean, I hate being even slightly preachy about almost anything, but like, for the love of God. I, f I feel okay using my influence on this one, to be honest. <laughs> Cause like, if, if not now, then when, I suppose. I almost wonder too if like, like, Vancouver's been good about it up till now. And most of the cases are not even, like, in Vancouver right now. They're due to this, like, house party that happened out in wine country. Um, but still, I almost wonder if, like, BC is in a bad place or potentially could become in a bad place because it's so nice in the summer. There's, there's some irony there. It's like, I think when people stay inside during the winter, they don't get too beaten up over it because they're, like... Uh, you know, uh, we're just missing the rain or a little bit of slush or something like that. Um, but, like, to stay inside in the summer when, you know, you got a beautiful view of the mountains and it's, like, sunny but not too sunny. You got a nice breeze and is great biking and hiking and patios and blah, blah, blah. I don't know. There's 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 a psychological element in, in there somewhere that, to be honest, I'm not qualified to to analyze, but that's never stopped me previously. Are we going to forget me now? Yeah, we really should. I, I wish that we could have gotten to the boss rush. If we'd paid attention earlier, we probably could have, but kind of the, the double-edged sword of this run uh, is that there's really uh, very little incentive to do better on this run. Because we already, like... It, it's so unlosable as to be comical. Like, if you were at McDonald's and you hadn't thought about what to order by the time you got to the kiosk, first off, can you do us all a favor and just maybe go, you go ahead, I'm still thinking, instead of going to one of the, like, three kiosks in the whole restaurant and then being like, hmm, hum, hmm, I'm going to look at 25 different options. Look, like, it's your right as a consumer, don't get me wrong, to take that time, but you're kind of, like, you know, leveraging that other people are not going to be impolite to you when you're being a little impolite to them, to be quite frank with you. You can still look at the menu on the big board without being at the kiosk. And don't even start with me. I know the straw men are coming. What if my eyes are so bad as to be... You drive, saw you drive to the store! If your eyes are so bad you can't read the menu... Please, get, get a new prescription. It's coming from somebody with Coke bottle glasses. You have glasses that the lenses are so thick they're like Coke bottles. You, you call them that there? I don't know. 
So now that I've established that I am in the right no matter what, <laughs> because of these hypothetical situations, you know what? This is like so not worth it, but we really don't want the mind. Or sorry, the body is a wonderland. Um, you know, it, it's the same uh, philosophy. I, I do have to say, and we'll, we'll get back to what I was originally going to say, but I do have to say, I'm really proud of myself over the past four or five months. Had to do some math there. Because um, for a guy who's, and especially this series, the, for a guy whose whole ethos uh, and, and really the driving force of his comedy is like slightly impolite situations that make me undeservedly angry in public, I think we've done a really good job of adapting to a new world where we barely go outside at all. <laughs> I'm happy. This. If you had asked me a couple of months ago, like, hey, what do you think could kill your ability to banter? I'm like, I don't know. Maybe if some kind of completely fictional situation came along where nobody was allowed to leave their house and all businesses shut down for six months. Um, but but here we are. So like, I'm 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 proud of myself for being able to pivot at least slightly. Uh, however, what was I gonna say? It's oh, I was gonna say it's like the when you go to the Coca-Cola freestyle machine. At the movie theater, you know, like the cool one that has the touch screen and you can mix and match flavors. Somebody, you know, so frequently people walk up there and they spend like, you know, over two minutes. And I, I, I endeavored quite hard there to come up with a number that was realistic but still aggravating. They spend two minutes picking what beverage they actually want. You don't realize you're, you're sapping two minutes off of everybody else behind you in the line just so you can get a dash of lime in your lemon cola. Like, it's just... Yeah, but isn't that my right as a consumer? You know what? It is, and I'm mad about it. Which is why if I ran the Coca-Cola freestyle machine, starting tomorrow, they only have six beverages. To streamline the process, okay? Starting tomorrow, they have Coke Diet Coke. Or Coke Coke Zero. If you're... And I say this as a, as a consumer of the occasional diet soda, okay? If you prefer Diet Coke, suck it up. Have a Coke Zero. If you prefer Coke Zero, which is the, the patrician's choice, suck it up and have a Diet Coke. They are so slightly different as to be uh, functionally nearly identical and if you're like no they're not i implore you your soda palette is too strong you you must consume a different beverage that's too much if you can reliably do the pepsi challenge like that that's a sign hold on all right that's a little too judgmental i apologize so it's got coke and diet coke or coke zero what comes next Sprite and Diet Sprite or Sprite Zero. What comes next? Either Root Beer, Diet Root Beer, or Dr. Pepper, Diet Dr. Pepper. I might be... Im impl I, you could convince me. If you lobbied me hard enough, I would add an iced tea, perhaps. But if you're like, what about Arnold Palmer's? No. We're not going to put Arnold Palmer's into the Coca-Cola freestyle machine. We'll be here for 25 years. Somet sometimes I think choice is our enemy. You know what I mean? Like, I, I've gone off on this for, for, with respect to the Coca-Cola freestyle machine more than any other adult human should ever do. But I, I wonder, like, it, and it's just a hypothesis. This is my null hypothesis. If you gave someone a soda fountain that had two choices, Pepsi and Diet Pepsi, and then pulled their happiness with the soda, having consumed it maybe half an hour later, and compared that to the exact same study done on somebody that had like a thousand choices for soda, I bet you would not see a difference in happiness. I'm not saying that the people with more choice would be less happy with their choice. I, I, my, my null hypothesis is that they enjoy it exactly the same. And any extra enjoyment merely comes from thinking that having made that choice was the better choice. Now, I might be getting a little bit too 
intellectually big for my britches on this one, so I hope I hope you'll bear with me. I would also like to say that it's intellectually dishonest to suggest the results of a study without actually doing the study. So please don't just believe me <laughs> based on the fact that I came up with the methodology. You don't change the results to match the hypothesis, you do it the other way around. That being said, that's that's my null hypothesis. Could I please receive some funding? It's not really the kind of thing that I think the government should fund. I think this is more like a middle school science fair experiment. I'll tell you one thing, it'd be way more interesting than seeing, you know, my 93rd volcano. You know what I'm talking about. Alright, we are obviously set, but it never hurts to get more set. That's the gimme. Um, I, sadly, I think Judas the Shadow you just don't take because you don't need. But that's fine. Every, everything's okay on this one. Um, but yeah, that's... I, I got a real bone to pick with a Coca-Cola freestyle machine. That, that human being psychology is only the tip of the iceberg. It takes way longer to do it, not just because people are choosing, but because of the fact that, uh... Like, the machines are less responsive than just an analog button. Thought maybe we might get lucky on that one. Um, but it, we don't need to get into that. It's the kind of thing where, I, whenever people are like, why are you so mad about it? It's like, I'm not mad about it. But it's just like, why did we switch to the worst version? <laughs> like I bet if you looked at the at the throughput, like here's the th I look at it a lot like I look at men's bathrooms, which is a sentence that is a little troubling until I continue. I remember having a conversation with a game developer at PAX because like the bathrooms at PAX are horrible, and if you've never been inside of the men's bathroom before, they're actually like archaic. Men's bathroom design is hostile. Instead of everybody having their own stall, every well, th there's usually like a few stalls and then a lot of urinals, um, which are just places where you stand up and you know let it fly. Um, at some places, and it's very nice when this happens, there is uh, a little uh, wooden or you know like a metal divider between the urinals, so that you don't have to. Uh, I mean, you, let me rephrase, because you don't have to look at anybody else doing it. But So you don't have to be concerned that anybody else is looking at yours or is, you know... Like, not that you would be flattering yourself, but these are all things that people have said to me in the past. Oh, you think, uh, don't flatter yourself that people would look at your whatever. Or like, uh, you know, you'd have to get into a conversation with somebody. And moreover, it's just nice to have an illusion of privacy while you're urinating. Because of the fact that, you know, at PAX, they don't put those up. I really think that even for people who do not have shy bladder, you're raising the TTP, and you can figure out it's time to something. Um, the TTP goes up by like 25% for the average person. For some people, it goes up by 400%. Some people, it's almost unchanged. But just like for a, a hundred bucks, you could make the design and functionality of your convention center bathrooms so much, that hundreds of thousands of people use annually, you could make it so much better that people would like, they'd actually enjoy going to the bathroom, maybe. But they just don't do it, and whenever you try to argue against it, people are like, well, why would you even like, because it's just nicer. I mean, I'm, we've been down this road uh, way too many times to even count. I'm a full stall individual. Although having more stalls might reduce throughput. And I'm I'm heavy on the might there. I think public men's bathrooms should maybe have like like 80 20 stalls to urinals or 100 0 stalls to urinals. That's my two cents. I've used urinals, I don't know thousands maybe tens of thousands of times in my life um i'm okay with it i prefer a stall whenever once sometimes i'll even wait for a stall depending on the situation um 
I don't think it would reduce throughput by as much as you think. I think it would raise comfort through the roof, dude. Anyway, I didn't mean to go off on this tangent. I apologize, but... The Coke Freestyle Machine is almost like the inverse problem. I feel like the Coke Freestyle Machine makes nobody happier and reduces throughput for no reason. Nobody's like, well, if I can't get vanilla Mr. Pib with a splash of Sprite Zero, then, you know, I'm out. Well, if you are, I encourage you to, again, tone down the soda. It's, it's just... Look, I'm using unfair argumentation techniques, but they're humorous, so... It's, it's well known. Something can't be a logical fallacy if it makes you laugh. That's called an own. Anyway. This is all for me to say, like, I miss going to the movies. <laughs> it's one roundabout way of me saying, man, I wish when this stuff was the stuff that was irritating me. But anyway, this was a fun run regardless. Look at that. 34 wins in a row with, like, no stress at all. For now, thanks for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. See ya!